All right. Well, I've been saying for a while I was going to add a video element to the podcast. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking, uh, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow with the uh, gun control debate in Virginia. Well, not debate. I think Virginia House of Delegates is voting on it tomorrow uh, as far as whether they're going to enact the new spending bill that also has a bunch of gun control measures in it. Uh, and as it's been dutifully pointed out to me by many of my more left-leaning friends, it, it's just, it's going to end up going to the Supreme Court. You know, some gun owner is going to challenge it, and then it's going to wind up going to the, you know, the Supreme Court, not just of Virginia, but the country. And uh, as they've done time and time again in the past, they're going to probably overturn it. So it's probably going to be a big nothing. But that being said, no doubt there's going to be some kind of protests. You're going to see probably a lot of gun control protests this year. So welcome to 2020. Trump's running for re-election and a bunch of protesters are going to be fully armed. This is great. Awesome. All right. Well, anyway, moving away from that. Uh, I wanted to uh, actually talk about a story. Uh, it's in the Kitsap Sun, which I guess is a local paper. So it hasn't hasn't circulated. This only happened like a couple days ago. Uh, but, I mean, no doubt Fox News or some other conservative leaning news source is going to pick this up because uh, they love stories like this. As much as they love to complain about the left complaining, uh you know the right the right does it a lot too in their own way their own special special way so basically this guy Kevin Chambers right he's on vacation or something he's like gone for a week and his buddy in his front yard puts up a Trump Pence 2020 make America great again sign which is frankly hilarious cuz this guy's like i guess kind of a liberal according to the story so so his buddy was like, this This would be hilarious, which to me is just perfect because it sounds exactly like something my dad would do to one of his friends. Like, you know, put a Trump sign in their yard while they're gone because uh, that's objectively hilarious. I don't care who you are. But anyway, so he's gone. Oh, apparently it was a work trip, not a vacation. And uh, so while he's gone, his buddy's like, haha, look what I did. And. He, and he was just like, ah, okay, I'll take it down when I get home. Like a week. But then there was like this Facebook group where all these people were talking about how disgusting this is. And, you know, we're going to tear down the sign. We're going to egg your house. It just it escalated very quickly. People were not happy about this. So, you know, he says, you know what? I don't like people telling me what to do on my private property, which is a huge sentiment I agree with. Uh, I'm sure that's come up before. You know, it's his private property. He can he can have a sign in his front yard, and people shouldn't be threatening to egg his house. That's ridiculous. No matter what you think about Trump supporters, I mean, come on, guys. So anyway, he uh, he decides that when he gets home, He's going to make it even bigger. He's going to get a bigger Trump sign just as a giant middle finger to all these people complaining on Facebook. And, uh, you know, so he does that. He keeps the sign up. And then somebody spray paints it. So what does Chambers and his buddy uh, Robert Parker do? They decided that uh, they're going to put the sign on stilts like 15 feet up in the air. Mind you, again, it's worth pointing out, this guy doesn't like Trump, apparently. I'm guessing his buddy who put the sign up does, you know? I mean, I'd have to assume. But anyway, so the sign's, you know, like I said, the sign's bigger, and the wall just got 15 feet higher. (laughs) And uh, then the city actually says that with non-commercial signs, the maximum height is six feet. And so that's a violation of city code, and he has to take the sign down by January 21st. And so, of course, you know, this guy, Chambers, he says uh, he says that their only, their only reason they're enforcing this rule is because of the contents of the sign and blah, blah, blah. 
so this is an ongoing thing, but it, it kind of, to me, felt like something worth talking about just because, you know, private property, this is, the, this, is this guy's yard. It's not impeding anyone's view. It's not dangerous. And uh, now the city wants him to take it down. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? I think it's, I, like I said, I think the whole story is hilarious. I think the city is maybe being unfair, but if they say these laws already existed, so, you know, as long as there's nobody else with 15 foot high signs in their yard that they've been ignoring for years, it is what it is. I just thought it was a funny story and I wanted to share it with you guys. And since it involved vandalism, I stretched it so that it does uh, still fit the parameters of the show. You know, what with criminals and all. Uh, that and, you know, it was a good excuse to put up a, a video for a change. I'll have this on uh, not just, well, you know, it's on Spotify. If you are listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or whatever. Uh, or like, apparently I'm on a bunch of others now too. Uh, because my RSS feed just gets shared to like Stitcher and other podcast listening platforms. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to put this one up as a YouTube video also. That's going to be a big staple for next season. I think I'm going to do videos for all of them. Like for any of you that were listening in the beginning, I already have the YouTube channel. It's just been inactive for like a couple months. Because when I was doing like 45 minute videos, it I couldn't, I, I don't have an extra hour to walk around with a camera. I mean, I've got a life, you know. Uh but now that we're keeping the videos, you know, 10 to 20 minutes, uh, I figure, you know, I do have time to add video content. And uh, I've got, uh, you know, some more equipment coming in, which is great. Like, you know, I've already got a camera, but now I've got stuff I can use to, like, get a decent angle so I don't look like a, a fat sloth. And, uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to make uh, the podcast also available on video. And I think that that'll just make it a little more fun for everybody. But this uh, this Chambers Trump sign story, like I said, uh, going back to that, it, I think it has a larger context. So this guy, left-leaning guy, and then a bunch of people cry foul on him, and now he's like a Trump supporter? You know, is that does this not sound like a pretty common story right now i mean just a couple days ago ricky gervais was hosting the golden globes right and you know so he does this whole thing of just calling a bunch of people out i mean i wouldn't even call it a hot take he's just he's just calling it how he sees it which is god that's such a droll phrase but it is it is what it is I hope it's not anything else and so ricky gervais Mind you, a, a a very liberal guy, and he's on stage basically calling all these Hollywood types hypocrites for taking a private jet to the Golden Globes and then telling people that they should use public transportation so that that way they reduce their carbon footprint. You know, he and it it's a good point in the fact that these celebrities are unable to laugh at themselves only kind of proves his point. And you've taken, again, the media framing has taken a liberal guy and kind of turned him into a conservative. Now he's a conservative mouthpiece. And he's not even on that team. And, I mean, then you got, like, Washington Post, or was it Washington Post? It might have been, might have been New York Times. I can't remember. But they're running a story where they say, nobody cares. And yet here you are, a normal ass person who's like, no, I actually, I, I do care. And look at the YouTube video count. You'll see there's another 3 million people that care too. And then this, I, what about Dave Chappelle? You remember Dave Chappelle's special that came out in like, what was that? Late August, early September, Sticks and Stones. And then Rotten Tomatoes pans it. They gave it like a, a five out of a hundred. And then the audience review is like 95 out of 100. And they say, oh, well, this, is just, this is just some crazy conservative screaming. No, Dave Chappelle's been a liberal for, for how long? He's, he has made it very clear he does not like Trump. 
and yet now they they what make him a conservative mouthpiece because he's just saying how he feels about cancel culture. I mean, early early this year, uh, I think it was what February or March. Aziz Ansari did the uh, he he did a, a special that's also on Netflix, and his was kind of the same way. It didn't go quite as far as Chappelle, certainly didn't go as far as Gervais, but yeah, I mean, you can see it, the comedians have a tendency to sort of predict this culture shift, because they're the first ones to push back, because there's a shock value to it, I think is really what it comes down to, you can, you can claim that it's anything else, but I really think it's a shock factor thing. So Aziz does kind of the soft start to this trend, and then you've got Chappelle, and then you've got Gervais. I mean, geez, what a way to go. He, I mean, he said before he got there, he'll never be back. And, uh, yeah, I'll say probably he's right. But I just think that the, the outrage reaction by the media specifically or people on Facebook, I mean, because let's be honest, you've all seen or gotten in a Facebook argument with someone who is just like beyond the pale like i mean even if you're a kind of a centrist guy i'm a bit i'm a bit i would say that i'm kind of in the center i i think so i you probably you tell me but when these people they they push back they get outraged you see it on twitter you see it in the new york times washington post huffington post the what's the other one uh occupy democrats you know this outrage reaction canceled and it pushes people to the right because they're like no this isn't bullshit i'm not the only one who feels this way i'm just i'm just saying how i feel and they push you they say no 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 you get over there you get on the right side of the line the conservative side of the line nobody cares but you look around and you're like no a lot of people feel this way a lot of people do. And there's and I'm not saying the Facebook thing I'm saying is I feel like it's mostly limited to Facebook. Like I mean truthfully, I've got friends who are super liberal, some that are just I mean not just liberal but like leftists, some so far as to be self-proclaimed socialists even though I think by the conventional definition I don't think that technically fits, but I'm not unpacking that for this episode. But you talk to these same people in person. The reason why they're very good friends of mine, or, I mean, the reason why they're good friends of mine is because they are reasonable people when you're having a face-to-face conversation. But even if you're talking to your own friend, typing it out, it's uh, it's a whole different animal. And like, even on New Year's Eve, I hung out with uh, my sister, a couple of her friends. I worked with them briefly in the past. And since then, I've never seen... I know my sister hangs out with them. I've interacted with them a little on Facebook. And I was like, man, these... Beyond the pale. So I tell my sister I'm coming over for New Year's Eve. And uh, she's like, oh, well, you know, my friends will be here. I don't want to say their names. I don't want to put anybody on blast. And I think to myself, like, should I even go? Like, am I going to get into an argument? Am I going to ruin New Year's Eve? thusly ruining my whole year if you're a big superstitious person i go anyway i tell myself let's not get into politics and then i completely contradict myself the second i show up uh and i start talking to uh, her friend's boyfriend i was up talking to this guy until 5 a.m like literally we both fell asleep sitting upright on the couch during this conversation it, it, we just, there was never a stopping point. And it was, honestly, I hope my whole year goes like this. I, I love talking to this guy. And, in again, in person, he does not seem like an unreasonable man. And, I mean, if he's on the show, uh, then I'll tell you, go check out his Facebook. Obviously a left-leaning guy in terms of, like, uh, AOC, Bernie, objectively that's pretty far left but his actual juxtaposition politically very centrist which is 
I don't know. That's why I'm saying like that that's the best way to have these conversations is to just go out and talk to people. Don't don't oh I do a lot of research online. I see what the libs are saying over there. Like, oh well I do a lot of research online and these conservatives are fucking crazy. Yeah. Get off the fucking internet. Just go talk to someone. Literally, just go talk to someone. You'll find a lot of these people are incredibly reasonable. A lot of these intelligent people are incredibly reasonable. If someone wants to blow up in your face and they can't have a, a conversation that has both give and take, sorry, they're probably an idiot. There's no sense. Don't waste your time. But you can learn a lot actually just sitting down and talking to somebody, which is really what I wanted to say was just that, you know, if you if you want people to be reasonable, you have to be reasonable first. And you're not going to find a lot of reason on Facebook or in the Huffington Post or at the Daily Wire for that matter. So go out, talk to somebody, understand their position and, uh, you know. Hit like on that Facebook page or on YouTube so I can gain more followers and actually make this something people want to participate in. Well, thanks for listening. And for those of you watching this on YouTube, thanks for watching.